chased in the blood letter I heard it when she screamed the drop Cause the sun caught the slug Relay this to no choice And listen to the straight up man before they ban What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Business and Biceps Episode 24 Coming off a record episode yeah. 23 Which I'm excited about today We're going to go over <laughs> how do you dissect and identify how to make your inner circle stronger, especially if you recognize it's weak after this podcast. And we're going to talk about some good and some bad business craziness that me and John have learned over the last week. And just we're excited to be here. And as you know, it's always brought to you by MaxEpperMuscle.com and Reebok. I want to introduce my co-host, John Fosco. How you doing today, brother? Brother, I, I, I'm doing great, and, and, and what I can tell you and what I want to share with the listeners is this weekend, for two main reasons, has been really special uh, for Corey and myself. Number one, um, we broke our podcast record again. The podcast truly cannot be stopped. It's <laughs> smashing Exciting. every glass ceiling that tries to get above it. And it's not because we're great or smart. It's because of you guys. And it's because you guys are spreading the word. We thank you so much. And number two, what we did with Max Effort Muscle, and you guys have been uh, on the journey the whole time, what we did on Black Friday, and we're going to do again tomorrow. you got to check the newsletter at midnight. Uh, yep. What we did on Black Friday is something that – was truly mind-blowing, and it was a, a situation where if you're in business or not, it's almost something you hear about, and it's talked about in fairy tale like terms. It was such a special day for us of accomplishment mm -hmm. that, um, to, honestly, Core, I don't know about you, but I don't mm -hmm. think we've taken a minute to take a deep breath and be like, oh, shit, we actually did that. No, I, you know, and i I got to get better at this. I think we've talked about this a couple different times, like... All I see is we can't run the tape gun fast enough, John. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, because I'm all about truth, guys. Yeah, getting it to people, man. Like, I'm excited for – I believe there was a lot – and here's how I know. There's a lot of people that bought up. You know, we ran 50%. We had the new fireman bag, which the Max Gratitude campaign was amazing. A lot of people bought up, and there was a lot of people that just bought one or three of things. So I know there was a lot of people that are truly giving us a try. And to me – like doing a deal like that was a way to give back to the people that have been supporting us this whole time, which I thought was awesome because I saw a lot of the same names come through. And you guys got to remember, man, we're looking at every order coming through. I'm seeing them in the warehouse. Like I know you guys, John knows you guys. Uh, we got our beat. We got our we got our thumb on this thing. But also the people that were on the fence and say, you know what, I'm gonna give these guys a try. You know, and and so I literally get up every day. John gets up every day and think, how can we? you know, beef up our system to get these things out faster. And that's what we're working on right now. We're excited about it, though. Yeah, we're excited. And, and, and the one thing I want to say to, to, to close it is, if you guys see any new, let's say, the bag you like, or if you guys are looking out for new products we're coming with, like, we are going to continue to innovate. And every time we do so, we are going to reward the people who have been with us the whole time, and that's you guys. We promise you that. Corey's huge on that. I'm huge on that. So we're just so excited that things are working, and, and yep. we promise you that we are going to continue to innovate, change the game, disrupt the industry, and, and, and you guys will be rewarded for supporting us. Promise you. Yeah. John, lastly, uh, before, we, before we go into the in, inner circle stuff, which I'm pumped to chat with you about especially, um, sure. Sure. talk about what we're doing on Monday briefly just so everybody for Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. Cyber. Monday, Monday, Monday. Um, so Cyber Monday is technically like Black Friday for online shoppers, or at least that's what it's supposed to be. So we launched our Max Gratitude campaign, which – Man, I think we sold out of our uh, fire bags bef well before noon Eastern time, which was yeah. just stunning, guys, because we ordered so many. Well, the Max Gratitude Campaign 2.0 is dropping tomorrow for Cyber Monday. It's going to be accompanied with a discount, but if you dig 
that bag, and if you dig seeing Max in artistic ways, and if you like collecting these things, and if you know people who are first responders, you are going to see another new Max bag, and it's going to drop at midnight on our newsletter list. So if you're not there, subscribe. If you (laughs) are there, Check your yeah. email at midnight. And here's the thing, guys. We got a lot of emails saying, did I get the fire bag? Did I get the fire bag? And, and unfortunately, for most people, they didn't get the fire bag. And it's because they ordered later in the day. Now, we're not punishing you guys. We just truly are learning the demand for these things. So when we say it's going out at midnight, I just would buy. Uh, uh, honestly, if you want it, I just would buy because we cannot guarantee it's going to be in stock all day. And the bag's dope. The bag is so dope, Corey. Tell them yeah, how dope it is. Dope. Yeah. So I mean, we talked about uh, the day, you know, the day before what the bag is. Look, we we gave back, um, and we'll continue to uh, even evolve that campaign with the firemen and firewomen. This one's police. So I dropped it. it it's for all you guys out there and gals out there that are risking your lives on the streets every day. We, we want to give back to you guys too. And then, you know, we're going to go forward with some military stuff in the future. But right now we're, we're excited about uh, the police will be dropping on Monday, accompanied by a discount. And yeah, the, these things are cool. I mean, there is an artistic approach to it. So I'll just kind of wrap it up with that. So we appreciate all the police, uh, police women and policemen out there and obviously the, the firemen and firewomen out there. And this is our way to kind of say, yeah, we see you guys. We appreciate you. We know you train hard um, so you can keep us safe. And so that, that's yeah. much appreciative. Cora, I want to say one thing to, 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 the, to the police and, and the cops. Because the bag is dropping tomorrow, you know, obviously the cops, the police, they've been in the news. Yep. Here's, we all have, here's what we have to say, guys. Just like we told you, why are we making a fireman bag? Because max effort supports firemen. Why are we making a police bag? Because Max Effort, as a company, supports cops, supports police men and women, and always will. So if yep. you are a policeman or woman, if you know one, if you have a family member, you're going to want to get them this bag. This is our way of showing gratitude. And Corey and myself and the rest of the company, we're so appreciative. So we really hope you guys like it. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's going to be good. So, all right, Johnny. Now, something I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, I always tell people that I'm not the best or the easiest to kind of let you in my inner circle, so-called, because of how important I know it is. And I think you're the same way. I always tell people, like, I don't have a lot of spots left. I don't need, I don't have any openings. (laughs) That's kind of how I joke about it. And it's really because, you know, a long time ago, I mean, I heard this when I was young, you know, you make around $30,000 of the top five people you hang out with, your actions and um, I think your habits tend to mimic the three to five people you hang out with the most, your mindset tends to mimic, I, I really believe it's, it's, in, it's the product of environment, it's the people you're sharing your ideas with, it's the people you count on, like, I always say I've got a, a pretty solid list of guys that I know I might not talk to for a long time. They might not be the so-called in my inner circle, but they're still like my homeboys that if I need their, a ball bat on my front door because we're going to battle, they'll be there for me. And then I have the guys that are truly like in my inner circle that I talk about with business, family, and we, we chat on a regular basis that I, I really, that we all kind of mimic each other. And I think that some people need to really take a hard look to see if that circle could be limiting them in their growth or if their circle's strong enough that it could actually push them for more growth. And I think that you got to take a hard look at that pretty often. Yeah, yeah. I, here's what I'd say. I see one thing consistently with everybody. It doesn't matter how old you are. There's friends, and then there's acquaintances. And yeah. what, I, what I feel I see often is the mixing of the two. And in Mm -hmm. my opinion, a friend and an acquaintance are two very, very different things. Okay. An acquaintance is somebody 
that you have respect for, right? That you talk to here and there, that you get along with, that you might see at a social function, and 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 and, and, and you get along with them. A friend to me, and 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 this is kind of why me and Corey are talking about your inner circle, right? There's only so many spots. A mm-hmm. friend to me is somebody I like. If you're my friend, like I I I got real love for you like like I've got real love for you if you're my friend you can live with me if you run into a problem if you're my friend and you go broke you got money if if I got money if you're my friend and you get in trouble I'm in trouble if you're in trouble that's how I look at friends because that word is thrown around so loosely and then what we do is we end up in these kind of dysfunctional relationships. You see it all the time where you call someone your friend and then they talk negatively about you behind your back. And then it creates this 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 dysfunction, almost like a dysfun- uh, dysfunctional boyfriend and girlfriend. So the first thing I believe you need to do is you need to identify the difference between your acquaintances and your friends. And dude, it may be extreme, but dude, friends are ride or die, man. They're they're they're, they're either all in or they're all out. That's what a friend is. If they're not that. They're an acquaintance. That's my take, core. Well, yeah, I, I like that a lot. I think that's I think that's a huge, huge thing to uh, to kind of throw out there because I I believe that you could have an acquaintance for fifteen years doesn't mean they ever cross over into like your your three to five roll dogs as I like right. to say right. I mean, so just because even you know them a long time still doesn't mean that they're going to cross into that um into that category and so and with me too it's a little it's a little different maybe some people are like this some aren't i have you know a couple friends that i've had since i was a kid that don't yeah. operate within business for with me or even care to and but 1000 percent, i could sleep on their couch tomorrow if i needed to just like to your point and if i needed ten dollars even if i just made millions i lost it all they'd give it to me you know so like that right. didn't have no like literally I've never felt jealousy from them, which is awesome because right. I, I just right. knew they were happy for me genuinely. Like I can tell when I talk to somebody as you can you. <laughs> sure. I think we can read that, right? And so cool. I don't operate with them on a regular basis, but I've known them for so long and I still like during the main holidays and those type of things. So they're like there, but I don't see them on a day-to-day basis. But I have my – really, I mean, John, obviously because through business – we, we were like really good acquaintances for, for a long time, what, set right. six, seven years. And then through this business, I talk to you as much as I talk to my wife probably. Actually, right. some days I might talk to you more. Probably. And so it's like, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where, you know, I only have three people, four people, maybe, and mostly closer to three that are in that area. And so if you're like 10 deep in this kind of thing, there's way too many people like too tight to you in my mind. Like I I just think that you got to be careful. You don't spread yourself out too much. I think you can leave yourself very vulnerable if you've got too many people in your stuff too, especially when you get to a certain level. I think that's how a lot of these athletes get in trouble. I think that that's a big deal. You can't, you can't have yourself all vulnerable like that. I don't think. No, you, you, you can't. And, and, and here's the thing, right? What, from a takeaway standpoint for you guys, right? If you guys are thinking, well, how do I know, right? How do I know yeah. if someone's worthy, right? Um, and, and, and again, me and Corey are professionals. We're, we're giving you our experience. We're giving you our opinion. But, but this is how I assess it, right? I told Corey a story off air about I have one, okay, one female friend, okay? And I'm going to tell you why she's my friend. And then I'll follow up with why it's a takeaway. She is my friend because when I was addicted to painkillers horribly and nobody, nobody, nobody had the courage to step, to step up to me and say, John, man, like you're going down a path that's dangerous. And this, no, nobody had the courage to do that, right? She called me straight up and she said, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to let you know this. All through high school, as long as I've known you, I've looked up to you. You're the guy 
that I always wanted to be like. You're the smartest guy I know. You're the guy I know or who, who I thought was going to be the most successful. You always have something outside the box to share and to say, and you are a special person, and what you've done to yourself is pathetic. It's pathetic, and I care so much about you that I'm done talking to you. Because if I continue to talk to you, what am I doing? I'm supporting your habit. So I love you, I care about you, but our relationship is over. And I would recommend you clean your shit up because all your gifts, John, you're wasting them, okay? That phone call from a female, okay, that opened my eyes so much that I started finally, finally saying, okay, you are an addict. Now, I obviously ended up overdosing, but after that phone call, I said to myself, you are an addict, and it's because of her. So after I got through that whole mess, her name is Mary, I called her up, you know, took her out to dinner, and I, and I told her that, and I told her how important that was to me. And, and here's the point, guys. It's not about drug addiction, and it's not about um, that situation. What it's about is it takes so much care and love to challenge someone when you know they're on the wrong path. And most people, most of your friends will say, oh, yeah, bro. Oh, you're smoking pot every day? Yeah, bro, that's cool, yeah. You want the friend who says, listen, man, I, I love you, dude. I'm always there for you. But, man, you're, you're, going, down the, you're going down the wrong path, and I'm not, not going to support. That's the friend you want. You want the friend who challenges you to be better. Like me, like me and Corey were talking about before we got on the air. What's a good training partner in the gym, guys? A guy who says, oh, you could bench 315? Let's just bench 315 all year. Or is it the guy who says, let's get 325 this week? Let's get 335 next month, right? He, mm -hmm. He's pushing you to get better. That, to me, is how you identify a real friend. I always say this way, John. How many people are there when you're moving? Your real friends show up to help you move your house because that's got to <laughs> be one of the worst. That's the funny thing, but a lot of people, like my buddy Todd, who uh, lives back home, and I love him like a brother. He's been my friend forever. It upset me. He moved houses. Now he lives hours away, but I, I would have took a day off. I would have done whatever I had to do to be there to help him, no matter what I had going on. I was out of town for Muscle Beach. So I, I didn't have the ability. I was in California for that photo shoot and that week. Like I didn't have the ability to be there to help him. And I, I called and I was like, dude, I'm really sorry. Because this is, it doesn't matter what I got going on. Like that happens one or, like your real friends help you do stuff like that. I know that sounds weird, but like everybody knows, no. like, who can I really call when I'm moving my house? You no, always, that, you that, that's always. a great surface <laughs> test, Cor, and I, and I love right. it, but to me it leads us down a path of, 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 of more substance, and, and that's why I like it because, you know, if you want to look at a friend when you're moving, who's there when you're moving, that's great. Now, it leads me to we all experience peaks and valleys. Yeah. Trust me, guys, when you're on that peak, when you're experiencing success, my God, does everyone want to call you? Does everyone want to yeah. be around you? Do people smile at you more? Do girls treat you better? Do your old friends become, want to become new friends again? Yes. Who is there when you're struggling? Because that guy or that girl or those guys or those girls who are there for you when you're down, when you're not successful, when you're failing, those are friends. Yeah, that's true. And I'll tell you what, John, the, I mean, you kind of got the new spot, um, but the three people that I spend most of my time with or talk about in this, they, they've been there for all those things, and including Rach, because I've, I've been known Rachel for 18 years, and she's seen the ups and downs of all these businesses, all this stuff, and, you know, and she wrote it, uh, we just had our anniversary of 13 years, which was really cool because neither of our parents made it 13 years. So that was oh, kind of special. Yeah. That was special for us just because of that, right? Um, because we took time, we took five years 
to get it together because we didn't want to make the same mistake. And that's why we waited five years before we got married um, and was together. So it was one of those things that she wrote on Instagram. She said, when I, when, when Corey's up, you know, and I'm down, but we can't both be down and we can both be up, but if somebody's down, the other one can't be down. The other one, even if they are down, they got to act, they got to pull you up. Like we've just had right. this really good in, in friends of whether it's your wife, whether it's your homeboy, whatever they're, they're in your inner circle and they got your back no matter what there's just, you know, and it takes a while that that person doesn't do that in a month. Like you can't, I just met this guy last month and he's awesome. Very rarely is he all of a sudden now right. like, your role dog. He's there for everything. He's got your back. He's going to hold your baby when it comes out. Like that doesn't happen. So just, just take time to, to Ooh, vet some of this stuff, point. right? Like that's, I think no, that's a big great point, Corp, because too easy. so many people, <laughs> like so many people are always like, oh, my new friend, you know, like I know, I know certain people who always got that new friend. They always got that new <laughs> friend, that new friend, that new friend. And that says, that says nothing about their new friend and it says everything about that person right if you always got that new friend okay let me let me give you some advice it's time to look in the motherfucking mirror because the reason you are pivoting to new friends all the time is because you can't maintain any consistent ones why can't you maintain any consistent ones i don't know right? People don't want to be around you. You're repelling people. So you got to go grab new friends. That's another indicator. Okay, guys, and take this away. If you are the guy or the girl, and I know so many of them, so many that are always bringing around a new friend, man, dude, that's when it's on you. That's when you are making blatant mistakes that everyone else can see, but you, you know, so I think that you're going to have new acquaintances all the time through business, through, you know, events, uh, whatever. But but that new, like, real deep roll dog friend, th- those things are kind of – those guys are kind of few and far between, right? So I think that one thing I also um, kind of like your uh, your friend did for you, which first of all, John, when she – I got a quick question. When she called you, where – I don't know. You might not remember. Were you, like, high at the time? Did you actually – did it sink yeah. in? And so did you, did you actually take value in it when the, the, you were able to like process it? And then you were like, oh, fuck. I mean, did it sink in initially you know, or did you like wake up the next day like, oh, damn. Oh, uh, no, Mary so called that, me. That, 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 that's, a great, that's a great question. So anyone who knows an addict or has been an addict, um, denial is the first thing. So, so what did I feel at first when mm-hmm. she did that? Okay, yeah. so, so I, I, F that B right yeah that's i'm what, sure what, that's what i wonder my head, right so sure. want to know okay the next morning i woke up and i'll be straight with you i thought about everything she said because i heard it i heard it and i wasn't caught up in emotion and um it brought me to tears because i knew i knew and i know she's real she's yeah. real what she brings to me is real and if she is going to sacrifice our friendship yeah. because of my choices? Like, dude, if you ain't going to take a look in the mirror now, you may never have the ability to. And that's almost what happened, right, with the overdose. And she was dead on. And to this day, like, I'll, she'll always have a place in my heart because she did that for me, you know what I'm saying? And that's to me what good what good friends do. And the one thing I, I want to say, like beyond that, guys, is yeah, this shows about success and 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 how we take this into business. But if you have friends that are not challenging you to be better, right, at, at, at many aspects of life, if you don't have friends like that, that is going to adversely affect your business or your career. So it is in your best business interest to find these kind of people who will elevate your game. And I will tell you, Corey, you as a individual, you have upped my game without trying because the way you operate, and and I told you this the other day when you said, you know, I choose, right? Like when bad things Mm -hmm. happen, I choose to always believe there's a blessing on the other side. You don't, you're not telling me there's a blessing on the other side. You're saying, yeah. I choose to believe sure. that. And that kind of positivity 
can either rub off on someone, yeah. right, or, or can go on deaf ears. So that rubbed off on me. And, and that choice is a choice that I choose to make now, right? It, it, that, it is, absolutely. That's, that's, a great, yeah. that's a great thing, John. The funny thing is you took it out. You took the words out of my mouth because I was about to say the same back to you. We're, we're so emotional right now, John, for each other. <laughs> Hey, listen, man. But it's the we truth, come, though, because I'm fucking real. That's it. Yeah, that's, but that is truth because you're the way that you operate too. So for me, guys, like obviously, I was excited to get back in the supplements. I was excited to get with John and do consulting. I had my, you know, my website is doing really well, and I will tell you that it would it would have been extremely easy for me to get comfortable, um, no question. And John has actually taken me out of that that comfort zone multiple times with, uh, and challenge me to be, you know, and I, I love one of the first things you said probably early on in our kind of business relationship was like, Corey, I, I know that you've got fitness on lock, which I love that you think that, which is, I feel, still feel like I got a lot to do, but it's one of those things that, that you said, but you know, I think, I think your personality, I think what you offer is way bigger than just fitness. I think it goes to across many, many, you know, borders in, in business and just, just not in fitness. Don't pigeonhole yourself. And that's right. not like a knock. It's just that you thought you you believe I'm I'm better than just one little nit. Not little. It's pretty big. I do believe. Scary. I know. I it's actually tough. know that. I know it. Yeah. And it, and I believe that too. But sometimes I don't think that way because I'm so all in fitness because I just love it. Right. So it's like one of those things where that's the first thing I think about when I get out of bed every morning is that I've been able to make this life for myself through that but I believe it can touch a lot more people outside of it too. I just, I just got to know that. And so I think that that was never a knock on. It was just, you know, Hey Corey, I think you can push that level up a little bit. And there's been multiple occasions like that since we've worked together that you've challenged, Hey Corey, I know you got social going good, but what about this? Look at that. Look at this. It's just, I think it's sure. really good to have somebody that's at, you know, a peer in business that can challenge you in a good constructive way uh, I'm not always the best at taking constructive criticism. Uh, Dustin, my other business partner, knows that too. Sometimes he'll bring stuff to me, and I'll be like a little sideways about it for a little while, and then I'll come back and say, "Yeah, let me look at it." You know, if I really don't think there's any value in it, and I'm I'm not feeling, I'll just be like, I, "I'm I'm not that fun to argue with when I really fucking feel one way about something." But neither none of us are because we all feel strong about what we believe in. But I think you've got to have somebody in your life that is at a peer level that can push you because that's only going to make you better because it's just like being in the gym. It's no fun just always being the strongest guy. It's no fun. I like to go to the gym where I'm not the strongest guy. The reason why I like to go to Westside occasionally is because I'm not even fucking remotely close to those strong those guys. If I'm in my gym, and, and I get beat a lot at my gym too, which is awesome. My crew's 14 deep now, and I got guys that are strong, and I like getting beat because if I'm always so – like that's where Rachel's checked me. Like you're not as sweet as you think you are. I mean, that's a, right. why you think you're so sweet. Back to ET, right? right. I mean, you right. cannot just walk around thinking you can't be the best in your circle all the time. If you're the best in your circle constantly, you're not pushing yourself. You've got to have somebody in there that's going to that's gonna push you a little bit in a constructive way. I think it's extremely important. And I know, I just I feel it. There's a lot of guys trying to pull me in, into their circle because they want that push. I mean, because right. I get a lot of guys at the gym, and I'm okay with that. They're, they're, they're borderline acquaintances, but in my circle, I mean, I, I super mean a lot to them and some of them are starting to work their way into my circle too, but they, they want that because they know it's going to elevate them. And I'm not mad at them for that because that's important. No. I'm, I'm saying the same thing. Like I'm glad John's in my circle cause he's elevating it. I mean, and that's, that's what I want. Well, yeah. And, and that comes back to, um, like-minded people. And I think it's a gift when you can come across and deal with and do business with and become friends with like-minded people. And, um, you know, to use Corey and myself as a case study, it's like we do not accept anything but the goal, right? Yeah. We do not make it to the goal every time we actually make it to the goal less than half the time but that doesn't mean we won't get there eventually yeah. so because we're like-minded it doesn't phase us when someone gets 
metaphorically shot in the leg. Well, dude, yeah. listen, take me to the hospital, bro. We're going to sew on a prosthetic. Let's keep going. I mean, that is the like-minded mindset that we share. So when we're trying to accomplish something, and in a very short time, I got to say, um, I'm very proud of what we've, we've done together. And, mm-hmm. and, and guys, it's not that me and Corey are, 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 are supernovas. It's that we're like-minded and we push each other to be be better. And and we want you guys to find that like-minded partner that pushes you to be better. But the one thing, the one thing I am going to make you so aware of is this, the most dangerous thing, right? If we're talking about pushing each other in business, um, Mm -hmm. the most dangerous thing in business I've come to learn is this. I call it, you know, I, I, I shouldn't use the word white, but I'm gonna, that's what I call it. I call it the white male ego. It is the most dangerous thing in business because when you start mixing credit. <laughs> There's no other right? way to explain it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the white, the white male ego, right? Like when you start mixing credit with business, like business is a zero-sum game. Business is about growth and optimization. Business mm-hmm. is not about who did what and who deserves the credit. Okay, when you're building a business, you're creating a team. Let's co- let's compare it to an NBA All-Star team, right? I want Russell Westbrook, I want Kevin Durant, I want Kawhi Leonard. Uh, you, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's what that's what a business is. It's not about, "Oh, well this game I scored 42." I want to get the ESPN. No, dude, like like we're a team and and when you score 42, it shouldn't be about you scoring 42. It should be about what wh- what do great players say? Man, if my teammates didn't pass the ball to me at the right time, you know, if I did, if my guys weren't getting steals, I'd have never had 42. So, thank God I got a great team. That's what a business is. When guys believe that, not they don't just say it. When they believe that, then you can build a business. But when you want the spotlight, like, look at me. I did that. That was my idea. Bro, you're missing it. You are literally swinging and missing, and you will strike out. It is just like a team. So that's the one thing I, want, I will caution you on. Because I, I, early on in my career, I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know how strong the white male ego was. I had no clue. But it tore down some of the things I did, and and, and I contributed. I, I contributed to some of that, you know. And I had to learn that. So so just just something to be aware of, guys, because it can be very dangerous. But when dialed in, oh my God, is it a strength? Well, yeah. One of the things I wanted to kind of give everybody is homework is I think you should write down. Like you're you're listening to this in your car, in the gym, whatever it is. Like actually, when you get to your desk at work or you're at your house like write down the five people you spend the most time with not counting your children like five adults that you spend the most time with and I want you to dissect that a little bit okay out of those five people you know we're gonna we're gonna go business for a second do you believe those people make around the same money as you are within 20 or 30 thousand do you believe that their habits um, of those five people are contributing or hindering what your goal is currently? And do you believe that those five people would help you move or let you sleep on their couch or whatnot? And, and I really believe that that's, that's something that you need to take a real hard look at. Um, and, you know, and obviously there's acquaintances and there, like John said, and there's, and there's your real friends or your true inner circle. And I would just, I would just take a look at it. And there's maybe some people you need to move out. Maybe there's some people you need to move in, but I think you need to be very intentional is a word that Maurice Claret uses all the time. Yeah. Be very intentional about the way you operate in that. And I'll tell you, Maurice's inner circle, it might be the hardest to get into. Fosco, yours ain't that easy neither. And I would say Dustin's probably ain't either. There's, I know some characters that I'm in there with them, man. I feel like I feel good about that spot. Like, <laughs> I, got some, I, got, I got some bosses that I'm, I'm in the inner circle with that are really hard to crack. <laughs> well, but you, you know I, what it is, it, 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 is, it, is it's just like um, if you think about, you know, those people, right? Like, mm-hmm. Those people, you made a great point, you know, are, are they letting me sleep on their couch, you know, uh, 
is their money my money when there's a problem? Here's what I could say, guys. Like, we all have the mentality, or, or most of us were taught in our family, that blood is thicker than water, right? That family is the be-all, end-all. And family is so important to me. But here's what I'll tell you. You cannot pick your family, but you That's can pick sure. your friends. And a real friend to me is like family because I'll kill for you, right? I'll, 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 I'll give you anything. And you, you, th- there is no gray area. You're either in or you're out. And if you're out, it doesn't mean I hate you. It just means you're not in, right? Like, <laughs> so, 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 you know, I, I just really want you guys to think about, like, you know, okay, man, I, uh, you know, m- my mom could have been rough or my dad could have been rough or my brother or sister. You picked your friends, man. So, so, so like Corey said, like, think about them. And, and if they're the kind that are down for you and are there for you, like, bring them closer. And you know what I'd say? Do something nice for them. Because those are people you want to keep throughout your whole life because they will drive you to be better. Okay? And they will also contribute to a happier life. So those are really the gems of life, guys. Like, everyone thinks success and money and business is where it's at. And listen, that's a great thing. But the, but, but the greatest thing in the world is positive relationships because it, 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 it's, the, it's the realest thing in the world. So um, I think that was great yeah. advice, Core, for people to, to, to think about that in, in those I think terms. yours was good, too, is, the, okay, you write them down, and if they should stay in the, in the circle, which hopefully most of you guys have some solid people there, they should reach out to them. And, you know, maybe they're in your circle, but you haven't talked to them in a week or haven't seen them. Maybe you need to set up a lunch with them. Maybe you need to send them something online. You need to throw them a text, something nice. Hey, I appreciate you. You know, one of the best thing is uh, when I tell people I appreciate them. People love right. it. Because, I mean, who, whoever tells people that they're appreciated very often. I mean, I don't think, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's not far after like a handwritten letter at this point of our, of our universe. Like people just don't do that stuff. And I, I let people know, like, you know, even if they are an acquaintance, sometimes I let them know I appreciate them. You know, look, when I met Eric Thomas, Eric Thomas had had an effect on me from the standpoint of like when I was going through my transition of muscle form, like I was listening to some of his videos because I mean, I don't really get that down very often, but I was, you know, I was battling some stuff. So I was like listening to ET every now and again. Yeah. Okay. Liking it. Just, just kind of polishing up as I'm getting ready for this new kind of venture for myself, whatever that would be. I didn't know at that point. So when I saw him, met him, we talked some business, you know, me and John were talking to him for a little while and, you know, seeing if we could have some synergies, whatever, whatever. And I was like, no, man, I appreciate you. Cause you know what? A couple of them things, they helped me out. I, I mean, I don't listen to them as much as I did as I used to, but at that point in time, and I think there's people that feel that way about us, John. And like, you know, we see it online. We see the direct message. Like we read them all guys. And when we see that, you know, I, I forgot to send you this, John. I got a guy that reached out to me that actually was um, 90 pounds um, and, and was addicted to heroin. And oh. So, yeah, it was crazy. I'll have to send you the email. And he found one of the workouts on bodybuilding.com. I think it was the Get Swole. So it's an old workout. For some reason, whatever I said in the promo, is it that or squat every day? Whatever I said, it just it, it locked on him. And then he locked on to everything. He's on the podcast. He's you know on other podcasts I'd been on. He just locked on to my material in general. Now he weighs 160 sure. pounds, been clean for two years. He loves lifting wow. weights. And you see that, and he's like, man, I sent you this message, but I think it was when you left the company, you, you didn't get it. I want to make sure you got it. And I was like, I'm reading this. I have my mom read it. I had my wife read it. And I'm like, you yeah. just don't That's know it. how you affect people sometimes. That's it. And, and so when I, um, when I see guys that or anybody uh, in my circle or just even acquaintances that make an impact on me, I try to let them know. It's very similar to asking people how their day is. You just don't know what that extra two steps sometimes do for people. So I would urge you guys, as you write those down, reach out to them and tell them you appreciate them. Um, sometimes in my guys in the morning, I'll just shoot them. I, I really very rarely just call people to ask how they're doing. I'm just too busy, to be quite honest. Right. It's, right. So are you, John. But I called you know, a couple of the guys in my crew and said, look, I appreciate you getting there at four in the morning. Like There's a lot of days I don't want to go, but I know you're going to be there. And I need you to step up in the group. Because we need, we want to be like 4 a.m. savages. Like that's what I've been telling my guys. I want our crew sure. to be legends. 
Like sure. we're all getting strong. Like I want like to, and that's part of that peer group that we talked about. That's how you push people. Like I'm putting that in their head that when people come to work out with us, they're going to be like, damn, like I wish I could be on that level. Not even just the strength level, but just the intensity, the intention, the just the, everybody's on time. No one's talking. Everybody's grind. Like just how yep. we operate, yep. how we operate. And well, so, think what you're you know, doing for that. those people, Cor, because what you're doing for those people is you're taking, let's say, a guy who could deadlift uh, 400 pounds, and um, you're making him believe that 500 pounds is not only guaranteed, but we're going to get to 600. And when he yeah. gets to 600, he's going to also uh, have a professional life and have a personal life. And when yeah. he gets challenges, like we all get every day, he's going to revert back to, man, when I was deadlifting 400 and I really thought I couldn't even get to 420, man, I'm at 600 now. He's going to know where to take his brain to yes. jump over that challenge, right? Not get afraid of it, calm people, and then, right, what you're doing is you're mentoring. Then he'll have people that he can say, come here, man, let me show you how to do this, dude. Don't freak out. Dude, that, that doesn't help nobody. Here's how we're going to handle this challenge because we can overcome it. We can do whatever we believe we can do. We can't do what we tell ourselves we can't do, okay? Yeah. So, you know, I, that, that, that's what I believe you're doing. And, and, and it can be taken into many different directions, and that is the power of the mind, and that's also the power of being around good people and people who care for you and friends. Yeah, it's massive. So that's what your circle should do for you. Like, right. I remember, hey, this is a good, this is a great example. Um, Maurice Claret, as I talked about, like, Maurice is one of the most infamous, I call him infamous, because he's famous and infamous. He's, he's a character, right? Because he just had so many life experiences. So I enjoy bouncing things off of him. I sent him the first Max Effort Muscle logo, John, the one that we never showed anybody, right? Before we <laughs> did, did Max. So he called, he, so he called me. Now, I never sent it to anybody. I never even showed it to Rachel. Maurice was the first person I sent it to. Yep. And because I knew what I would get because I knew it wasn't good. I think we both did. Right. So Reese calls yeah, me and says, yeah, gee, yeah. hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. It ain't doing it for me. Like you got to <laughs> expect better than that. Like that ain't getting it. Um, right. Like just straight up, gee, like you're coming off looking like Nike. You got to bring it. Um, you can't. Uh, this is fall off. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and if the, br remember, the bridge I, just I was, broke. You remember, I knew, but I knew he was right. Because remember, I kept telling you, like, ah, uh, and you knew it too. We, we knew it needed some spice, right? And that's why you're like, hey, ding, 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 ding. And then it came to the, the design we, we got. But right, it, right. That, I was the person I sent it to because I didn't want a yes man. Right. Right. So right. That yes, man. I'm sorry. I, I want to go off on that for one minute. It's like, <laughs> guys, if you have yes men in your life, and this is probably because that phrase is so common in the UFC MMA world where I'm from. Yes, men, all they do for you is not challenge you. Yes, men, here's what they guarantee. They guarantee that you are going to be the same today as you are in two years from now. That's what yes, men guarantee. Now, typically... A yes man, a yes man stays around you for two reasons. One, he's making money off you, or two, you bring him some sort of status, okay? Mm -hmm. So if there's someone who just nods their head, even before you get out their thought, get them the fuck out of your life. You want that dude who's busting your chops in a respectful way yeah. because they elevate your game in every category you want ball busters that show love. That's what you want. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I was, you know, I ain't ingrained like the UFC like you are, but I've seen it real bad there. Oh, yeah, you good, champ. You good. I'm like, bro, you ain't good. You're fucking lazy. Get it together. Like, that's what they... You want to have heard of BJ Penn? 
honestly one of the most talented guys in the history of, 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 of combat sports. BJ Penn should be the greatest MMA fighter of all time. That guy trained with his brothers and his friends on, on Hilo, and if he trained with a camp ever, he'd be the best fighter ever. But BJ Penn now, at, at a very old age, is trying to make a comeback because now, finally now, he's, what, 38 or something, he, he gets it. But guess yeah, what? Partners. He ain't got a 25-year-old's body no more. It's too late. It's too late. He's the baddest dude that never looked tough. Right. Like he I mean, never yeah, looked like, tough. <laughs> he came into the octagon looking like skinny arms and a little belly. I mean, but he was bad because oh, he was just kind of crazy, dude, right? He oh. No question. Listen, BJ Penn, BJ Penn was a BJJ world champion after three years of training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Guys, let me tell you what that's wow. like. That's like going from playing uh, freshman baseball, okay, <laughs> to starting on the all-star team for Major League Baseball three years later. It's, it's probably harder than that. It's probably harder than that because there are some 18-year-olds – who, you know, can pitch and stuff like that. So this guy was so good at jujitsu, and what does he do in in MMA? He comes in the boxes, and he beats the shit out of people. But he never put it together because he surrounded himself by guys who were like, oh, my God, BJ Penn makes a lot of money. Yes, BJ. Oh, you're you're, you're training with the right people. Oh, yeah, you got the right – yes, BJ, yes, BJ. And and BJ is one of those guys who should have been the best, and um, he's uh, he's not. So – uh, you brought up that word, that phrase, yes, men, guys, stay the fuck away from them. And there's a difference between guys that are, are, I think, around you that are being mentored and learning and that are putting their time in, they're helping, they're, they're donating their time that, that aren't like literally leeching off you. A yes man leeches off you and then, and then hypes your ego. I mean, that's what, in my mind. Your ego, because guess what? That's such a great point, Corey. When when you are a human, it is, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're freaking Deepak Chopra or or you're Oprah. If somebody pumps your ego up, it's always going to feel good. It's always yeah, going of course. to feel good. So if you so awesome. right, they pump that ego, and, and it don't matter who you are, man. You pump my ego, I feel good. You pump core ego, yeah. he, he feels good. So there is an equation to being a yes man. You're, you're exactly correct. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's for sure. It makes me laugh because I, I was in a few camps, and, it was, and I saw the yes man was so bad. I mean, you just, you're just hindering the growth. That person, if it's in your circle – they're hindering the growth of you. So if you like your, you know, you're getting worse while they're leeching off you and, and you, you're just making yourself feel good, but in reality, you're going backwards, not forward. And so if that's what you like, <laughs> yeah. then have your three to five guys be that. Right, um, that, right. And, that is an epic I'm failure. To close it out, I, I, I want to say this. Here's what, uh, you know, working with a lot of fighters back in the day, I used to always say this. Here's what I'm going to tell you. You may not like it. You may like it. If you don't like it, you can fire me because you're always going to get the truth. And my job is to make sure that you achieve your goal or your goal is to be a champion. All right. Your takedowns suck. We need a new wrestling coach because you (laughs) couldn't take down my fucking mom. Okay. Like, oh, you want to fire me? Cool. Like, because if you hire me or if you work with someone, under the pretenses of, I want to be the best. Oh, oh, you do? Okay, cool. So when we're working, right, and there's a huge hole in your game, and I identify it, and you, and you cry like a little bitch because I identify it, and you try to use your power, I, ain't, I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't care who the fuck you are. I don't care how much money you're worth. I'm not a yes man because I am here to do what I said I was going to do. And that's help you. And I ain't helping you if, if I sit there and make money on your back. <laughs> so I would say, John, if, if you couldn't get a takeaway from how to solidly put together your squad, a.k.a. inner circle, from this podcast, then I, I don't know if you'd ever get it figured out. Because I think we talked about the characters that make their way into it that you need to get rid of the solid people that will be there to help you move your house and let you sleep on their couch or give you, you know, there's a thing that says, you know, this guy would give you 10 bucks 
and that guy would give you 20, but your real homie only had 10, and he right. still gave it to you. Like, that's the guys you want. And so whether it's business, whether it's personal, the difference between acquaintances, the difference between real friends and, and true inner circle, I, I think uh, we articulated it very well. There were some, there were some really great takeaways um, for our listeners, man. Good, great job. Yeah, no, no, same to you, man. And, and here's the thing, guys. If you feel like we're crossing over into personal stuff, this is personal stuff. But, but here's yeah. the kicker. The, the kicker is that this personal stuff directly, directly oh. affects career and yeah. business. And you are the sum of your five parts, which are your friends. You are. So if they're motivated people, if they're pushing you to get better, here's how it connects to business. They're motivated yep. people. They're pushing you to get better. So you're going to keep climbing that corporate ladder. You're going to keep growing your business. That's how it connects, guys. Like, this stuff is so important. And, Corey, I, I, I agree, man. We gave, we gave them ways to identify it. And um, I'm very happy we can do this, man, because for you young guys, man, listen to this shit on repeat because, it's important. God damn, I, 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 I wish I could have listened to this stuff when I was younger. Oh, no question. I think that, um, you know, man, as I think through the same thing, it's like I whittled mine down over and over and over again to where it ended up being the same people that was there in the start anyway. Right. <laughs> I've been thankful. You know what I mean? I've added a few along the way, but the three or four that have been there since I've been a kid, really, which which is awesome and really hard to do. And some of you guys might be like that, some of you might not be, but you can still, uh, you know, really intentionally look at yourself. And, and I will tell you that when your relationships, I, I truly believe this, whether it's your home life, whether it's your friends, when they're a mess, your business is going to be a mess. I don't know too many guys or gals that have hysteria or dysfunction going on outside of work that operate at a high level. I don't know very many. And if they do, they can't do it for a long period of time. Um, right. I've seen it, it's unsustainable. It's unsustainable. And so just keep that in mind. If you're, if you're, a, if you have drama filled, yes, men, lots of static around you, which I've talked about multiple times. If your inner circle is a wreck, you're going to be a wreck. It's just going to yeah. happen. So take yeah. notice. That's great point. Great point. John, great point. Stop? Oh, 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 two things, two things, core. I got to say Go two things first. Okay. Go ahead. Midnight. Yes. Police Max Effort newsletter. Midnight yes. email. Check it or you Sunday won't night. Be. Sunday night. This is Monday. Sunday. We talk. It's Monday podcast. It's sometimes you hear it on Sunday. But Sunday yeah, night. Some, <laughs> listen, this is crazy this is stuff. Um, uh, if you're listening, you better go look at it though, because I hope you can get one. <laughs> no, Cor <laughs> Yeah, no, no. We're we're good. You guys can check it tonight at midnight. No, they can check yep. it tonight at midnight. Bro. They're good. Yep. Um, and, and the second thing I was thinking about, so I was just watching the Cardinals and the Falcons before we got on the air, and I, I thought to myself, I was like, does Corey even know? And that's why i got to ask you, can the podcast be stopped? The podcast can't be stopped! Stop yourself without any words. I got so high.